Uh, it looks a little weird, but I think it's fine. Okay, so this is the setup. You have uh, some block of some math. I'm just gonna assign symbols as we go. Of some mass resting on a frictionless ramp inclined at some angle, beta, to the horizontal. The block is held by a string that is stretched four centimeters. Okay. So I guess, um, so if the string was at an equilibrium length, it would be at something like this length here. So the question text is describing how at this position, the string has stretched by some distance delta x. What is the first constant of the spring? Okay, um, so, <laughs> so as I was saying, um, it almost doesn't matter what the question is asking. I guess uh, maybe as you're thinking through, if you're thinking, well, the force constant of the spring, uh, if I somehow knew the spring force, then I could relate it through Hooke's law, which says the force due to spring is given by minus k times delta x. So any question about the force constant of the spring, especially once they've given us the delta x, it's kind of the same as question about the, the spring force itself. Uh, if you have that, great. <laughs> That's going to be helpful as we are going through. But it doesn't quite, it doesn't get you far enough. And um, this is, again, the exact scenario where we recommend using the standard strategy or the systematic Newton's law problem solving strategy. We are going to first draw a free body diagram. We are going to define coordinate axis, and we will decompose the forces. Um, break down, if necessary. And then in the final step, we are going to write down the net force equation. And it might seem, to a beginner's eye, it might seem like none of these steps have anything to do with these uh, but the goal the point the goal here is the is to really solve the physical situation it's not about answering any particular question but it's about developing the understanding of the whole situation once you have that then a lot of the questions that someone might ask about the setup becomes trivially easy to answer uh, on the other hand, if you're just looking to find the decessor quickly, then yeah, you're just going to get stuck. So let me draw a free body diagram. Uh, I have only one object, so I only need one free body diagram of the block. And as I keep emphasizing, this is the most important step. This is a step where you have to make sure that you didn't forget anything. So, um, so I, as I draw these free body diagrams, I like to start with the gravity because I always have gravity, mg. And, um, and I'm looking for things that are touching this mass in order to figure out all the other contact forces that are acting on this mass. I see a surface of contact here. So uh, let me draw some auxiliary figures so that I can draw that angle. So in the contact with this surface, there is going, going to be normal force and potentially friction, but they told us it's uh, frictionless. So I don't have to worry about friction. So I still need to worry about the normal force. So I need to draw normal force from that surface there. Okay, um, and oh, and the spring is touching the block as well. So we are going to have a spring force. Let me draw the spring force along the surface. I mean, it seems parallel, so I'm going to assume it is. Okay, so that looks like a complete free body diagram. Uh, so in this setup, let's see, the block is resting. So it's not moving. It continues to not move which means the, its acceleration is zero. So, um, so as we are doing step number two, defining our coordinate axis, the situations where you have zero acceleration is where you have complete freedom to choose whatever axis seems convenient to you. So if you wanted to, you could choose this straight axis. 
that's totally fine. Either way, both the x and y component of acceleration is zero. Now, in this setup, that seems a little bit silly. Um, you have two forces that are kind of going along the direction that's uh, along the surface or perpendicular to the surface. So I'm going to define my x and y this way. <laughs> I only need to break down one force, gravity, rather than two forces, normal force and spring force. So, but you know, I'm just pointing out, you could also choose the other axis if you want to do more um, force decomposition exercise. So, okay, right, let me break down my gravity into X. So here's the X component and the Y component. And uh, decomposing the force this way will show you this right triangle. And I need to identify the angles in this right triangle. The angle I'm given is the angle of the incline, this angle here, theta. So, um, so if I consider that this is right triangle, then I have this right triangle involving the ramp stuff. That tells me that uh, this angle here is 90 degrees minus theta, uh, which means going back to the first right triangle I pointed out, this angle here must be theta. And this is, again, the geometry exercise you have to go through each time. And once I have that, then I can, I think I have enough information to write down the magnitudes of the components. This is the opposite side, so it should be mg sine theta for the x component. And this y component should be, it's adjacent to the angle, so it should be mg cosine theta. Okay, I um, think I'm done with the step number three. So we are ready to do step number four. We have one object, two dimensions, so we should be writing down two equations. Net force in the x direction is equal to, I have two forces, the spring force and the gravitational force. So spring force minus mg sine theta is equal to zero. That's what we are talking about. Acceleration is zero. So net force is just going to add up to zero in both dimensions. Net force in y direction, I have normal force and mg cosine theta. And minus mg cosine theta. So again, equal to zero. So this is the end of the standard strategy. Again, it doesn't quite answer the question for you. But what it has hopefully done is leave you in a place where you have all the information necessary to answer the question. You just need to piece them together. You have two equations, one and two. And I'm hoping I have two unknowns. Let's see here. I don't know the spring force, a mass I know, G I know, and I don't know the normal force. Okay, so in fact, I think these two equations are completely separated. If I simply consider this, I'm golden. I don't, normal force, I mean, if I don't need to know the normal force, I can just uh, ignore the second equation and just work with the first equation. That tells me the spring force is equal to mg sine theta. So now the question doesn't ask for spring force, it asks for the force constant, so okay. I need to go back through here to get, so spring force is mg sine theta. So the constant itself should be k is equal to um, mg sine theta divided by delta x. Now, someone watching carefully might ask, hey, did I forget a minus sign there? <laughs> I didn't, I did see it. Um, it uh, what you have to be careful is um, what the meaning of the minus sign is. It, minus sign here is here to indicate direction. Uh, it's there to say that the direction of displacement is opposite from the direction of the force. Now, the way I might write my Newton's second law equations, I include the directions all in my, um, I include the directions in my equation, like with these minus signs, meaning I expect all my variables to be a positive quantity. So, um, and K, spring constant by convention is positive. And here I'm plugging in delta X as a positive quantity. So with all that, if I just 
you know, put in a minus sign here, then I, I'm doing something that um, reveals uh, mathematical immaturity, which is um, you don't give uh, careful thought to what your mathematical symbols mean. So you should think through that. Plus, um, you know, if you put in minus sign, then you get an error. And I, in physics, the most common type of algebra mistake is sign error. There are sometimes a very tricky situations where they can come in and uh, really the, I just say, everyone's going to make sign errors from time to time. Just be ready to recognize it and correct it when you do make a sign errors. So uh, since this question came up, let me just uh, go through the calculation and make sure the, the, the homework system recognizes the correct answer as being correct. So I'm going to say 30 kilogram times 9.8 meter per second squared times uh, the angle theta. So the way I plug it is uh, 60, oops, uh, 60 degrees sine of that. Okay, that looks right. Okay. Um, and then this whole thing divided by delta x. Now here, um, I have to be careful. If I enter the number in centimeters, the combination of my um, units won't turn out to be Newton per meter. It will be Newton per centimeter. <laughs> so I, I should uh, uh, convert and enter this in meters. So divided by 0 0.04 meters. OK, 6370. Uh, should the result in correct answer? Let's see. So 6370. Again, we used to have problem with the rounding, but we should have fixed the, yeah, we fixed that. Yeah. So, good.